Thank you for tuning in live. I'm your host, Brand Ethan. And today, we're talking about all of the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War news there is, and there is a lot. First things first, let's discuss pre-ordering. This kind of pisses me off, if I'm being honest, because it's not so consumer friendly. There are currently only three different versions of Black Ops Cold War that you can pre-order. The Standard Edition, the Cross-Gen Edition, and then the Ultimate Edition. Now, you can just get the Standard Edition, and it will be backwards compatible on the next generation of consoles, but you will not get the updated version of the game. So no ray tracing or 120 FPS, even though your console will be capable of it, which is very annoying that they are still making you pay an extra $20 for it. Personally, what I was going to do was just pre-order Black Ops Cold War for just the Xbox Series X instead of getting the cross-gen bundle because the current rumor is that the Series X will release on November 5th and the PS5 releasing a week or two after in North America. Basically meaning that the Xbox will release one week before Call of Duty 2020 and the PS5 releasing either the week of or the week after COD Black Ops Cold War releases. So really, if you're getting the Xbox day one, then there's no real point in buying the new Black Ops for the current gen consoles. And if you're buying a PS5, then you could sacrifice a few days for the new COD for like 20 bucks. The problem is you can't pre-order just the next gen game. They're basically charging you for two games unless you just buy it on the new system when you get it, which is very stupid. You should be able to pre-order the game on the Activision site for the console of your choosing, and then they give you the digital download code or whatever of that specific console game instead of forcing you to spend an extra $20 on a cross-gen game that you don't even need. Side note here, imagine if they capped the frame rates for PC gamers, like for example, like a Call of Duty is $60, but you only get 60 frames per second, and if you want it unlocked up to 240 frames or whatever, then you have to pay an extra $20 to make it around 80. The PC community would freak out and boycott the game. Console gamers deserve the same respect. Me personally, I'm going to pre-order the game for the beta, and then cancel my pre-order once the beta is complete, and then buy it only on the new console. I buy enough stupid skins from Activision, I'm going to say as many nickel and dimes as I can. Speaking of the beta though, Call of Duty World War II has actually leaked the date of the Black Ops Cold War beta. COD 2020's beta begins on October 8th first on PS4, which I assume will be an exclusive closed beta for two days and then open up for the weekend. Now it's possible that this first weekend is exclusive to PlayStation 4 and that we will get an Xbox and PC closed beta on October 15th, a week after October 8th, and then opening up two days later for anybody who doesn't pre-order. This is what they've done in the past. Other than that, the October 8th is just a PS4 exclusive and then it opens up for everyone that same weekend of October 10th. The only reason I see this happening is because because on October 8th, we will be just over a month away to launch and they will need all the time they can to actually fix things. And with two weekends of a beta, they'll just have less time to actually tweak things. But with the multiplayer reveal coming on September 9th, we will know more information. Also, fingers crossed for a Black Ops Cold War Warzone beta, because that's really all that I care about. In other news, Warzone Season 6 has been inadvertently teased, most likely inadvertently. With this image being shown at the Call of Duty Champs trailer, shout out to Dallas, Looks like the leaks were right and we are getting a subway station in Warzone. That will be super cool, but also very weird. I wonder how it will work. Will it be scheduled every two minutes like a regular subway? Will you get gas damage if it goes out of the zone? You're underground and you can't hop off. Even if it's only for a second, I don't know, who knows, but I love when they shake things up and I'm very excited. And last but not least, Call of Duty finally has creator codes. This is huge news and honestly, perfectly timed. As of right now, only a small amount of creators actually have been given the code. Large creators like Scump and Pomage have not been given codes, but let's be real, they are going to get codes soon. I just hope that they keep the same model as Fortnite and give codes to everybody with a thousand subscribers or more, because that would mean that I could get one and that's all that matters, right? I feel like this is a great move. It gives creators a little monetary boost, which is great, especially during the current economic uncertainty. It keeps YouTubers making YouTube videos and in turn, keep that free advertising, which I guess is technically not free anymore. It will also put smaller creators on Activision's radar. Before they had to literally watch YouTube videos and see who was gaining popularity and who they liked so they could invite them to their secret game reveals. Now they will literally have stats of every person in their partner program, see who is the most popular, who is growing, fastest, who is the most consistent, blah, blah, blah. This will be very cool, and I expect to see some smaller creators being invited to their reveal events in the coming years. Guys, if you liked the video, like the video. If you loved the video, subscribe down below, and let me know in the comment section if you laughed, because that is important to me. Peace out.